Friday. So there's this thing which happens sometimes when I've had a good few painting sessions when things have started to move well and that is that I get frozen because I come in and I look at what I've got and I know it's not finished yet. I know it's not enough. Somebody asked me what's the difference between something which is just a series of drips and effects and something which is a painting and you're of course not at the point of worrying about that yet because we're in the process of finding out who you are and what kind of paint effects you want to make and how you want to handle paint but I'm a little bit further up that path now and I am to the point of making finished paintings and so my answer to that question is that it's it's when a series of decisions have been made with intention then I feel it's a painting. So uh, that one that you see me working on, that is currently a series of effects, but I'm on my path with an intention. So I'll start making some more decisions on that, then it will move forward. However, sometimes when they're at that effect stage, they get to this point where I like them and I can feel frozen about approaching them again. And that happened a few days after working on the grey one. So I came in here, but I just couldn't face doing anything to it. And I've learned to respect that and to not force myself to do things I don't want to do. On the other hand, that doesn't mean going and sitting in a chair and watching television. This was my painting time and I wanted to use it productively but not to force myself creatively to do something that my intuition my soul whatever you want to call it was not ready for so this little video is about what I did instead and I hope it's inspirational in the sense that I hope you can see this idea of trusting ourselves and doing what feels good applies to our process as well as to the actual work so listening in for the intuitive feeling that now's the time to go for it on that big painting now's the time not to and then finding something else productive and interesting and fun to do instead and that keeps the painting process light and uh it, well it keeps it joyful because in the end this turned into a really good painting day for me, as you'll see, but not in the way I'd maybe anticipated when I woke up that morning. So let me show you what happened. I'm not having a good day. I just recorded a whole section for you, which didn't record. Let me start again. So I'm getting out my sketchbook, which is my current workbook for the Ted Hughes project. Um, notes in here and just random things. But what I did in here, the other day is to work in this in the small squares that you've done and then cut them up there was nothing that I wanted to frame or, or consider a painting but I don't like wasting them so they go in here and after I stuck them in here I then started to play with a pencil making lines on them and remembered or discovered that I really like line coming through an open space so I tried different ways of doing that in here and here I did it over the blue and green and um, I don't particularly think I got much out of this and today I'm just in one of those moods where I don't feel like coming in and working on big pieces and people have asked me what do you do when you don't feel it well this is time I had set aside to paint if I don't paint just because I don't feel inspired then I've just wasted that time that I'm actually able to paint don't want to do that so I want to do something so I came in and thought what could I do that would be fun and also interesting and maybe get further than I got with these so what I came across as I came in were these color swatches just at which were on my shelf and these are the ones I mixed up in the mix color mixing video I love them I love the colors and on the back I've written what the palette was alizarin crimson cadmium yellow white and black that's all that made up all these different colors. And so I decided, oh, actually, I also had ultramarine blue in a couple of them. That one had some ultramarine blue. Most of them, well, you know, didn't. So 
I thought, right, what could I could play with those colors, which I love, in this format of the little squares and then see what happens. So, and I might even do them even smaller than this. We'll see. Now I'm working with these colors. And this is, I learned from taking a free workshop last week with Gabriel Lipper. Some of you might have done that this is called an off primary palette i didn't know that but what that means is i'm using cadmium yellow which is about as primary as you can get you know it's a bright strong yellow but instead of blue i'm using black because there is a lot of blue in black so i it's off primary because it's not the straightforward primaries instead of a cadmium red or a scarlet i'm using alizarin crimson hue which is a very desaturated, almost deep plum red. And then I'm using white. And I'm using those because that's what made these lovely colors. But I learned, as I say from Gabe, that that's what called an off primary palette. And so, what I like about this one is I've got warm color, the yellow and a cool red. And obviously the black's gonna be cool but I have got something warm in here. So it should, it, that's why it mix up mixes up such pleasing colors and so I'm gonna have a go but I'm gonna work in the squares using those colors and see if I can push my palette in a different direction because at the moment my palette has been made up of alizarin crimson I've had Indian yellow instead of cadmium yellow I've been using some blue and I have used black I've used yellow ochre which I don't have here and yellow ochre is a big standby for me in mixing up creams so I want to see what I can do within that, within the limited range that's available to me and see if that maybe pushes the big paintings into different colour areas. Maybe I start bringing in some cadmium yellow. Maybe, maybe I don't. We'll see. But this is what I'm thinking. It'll just be something to use my painting time on that I can enjoy when I don't feel inspired to tackle the big ones and don't know what to do with them. So let's see what happens. Tequila in my line. So I suspect the new policy, and I don't have to inform you. You know, he picked it up as well, and I said, I'm sure we're going to have this one to Nicola. Right, so I've got uneven squares. Because I'm not bothered about what size they are, but I've got a bit smaller than last time. What's interesting is, I'm overthinking this. I'm overthinking it already. What, should I start with the uh, purple, or the alizarin crimson and the black to make some plums and then some lighter pinks? Or should I go with mixing the yellows and black and crimson together to get a green? Overthinking already. But let's start with, I'll try and do this on the palette you can see. So... We'll start with mixing up some green. And I remember that on my cards, I liked the green when I'd also added a bit of red into it. So come over here and take some red and put that in. I think I want more yellow in it than that. I've also got a bit of fluid gloss medium in here. I just found a, I found a bottle of it, to be honest. And I know that I can put quite a bit of fluid gloss medium in before it affects anything about the pigment. And so I can stretch my paint a bit more. So I want to now just play on here without thinking about squares, which is really hard. So to start with, I'm not even really looking. I'm just moving the brush around. You can't see, but my eyes are closed. You probably can tell <laughs> from what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna try toning it down. So this is both a color mixing and a painting exercise, isn't it? Again, not looking. I just wanna get some paint down and have some surprises happen. Now that's turned it really gray green because I put a lot more of the black in. Don't want it getting too dark by this. I'm lightening it up. Let's mix up some orange now, which you can't see. I'm on a different palette. This is partly how I keep things organized. Um, 
Now, if I put a tiny bit of that green into here, just a bit, it's just going to harmonise everything. And they're going to pretty much harmonise anyway because it's a limited palette. But just putting a tiny bit of each colour into the other colours can make everything really look lovely. One thing I miss when I'm working on a table is having it hanging up and the drips coming down and so I'm not using paint as fluidly and noticing as I do when I'm on the wall. I like this orange against the grey. That's nice. Where might we want something really bold? We haven't got anything up here. So this is just putting the pure black in. And of course, if the paint's wet, I can mix on here. Now, so people asking, how do you stop things getting muddy? That's starting to get muddy because things smush together, but it's not too bad. If I leave it now, it's okay. If I keep adding on there until that's dry, then it's gonna get really mushed up. We've got this very light gray here, but I'd like something a bit warmer. This is where I miss my yellow ochre. But I'm being forced because I've set limitations for myself. I'm being forced to do something else. that next to black it's going to look even stronger than if I put it just next to the green. This is the magic of colour. It's colour is always relative so I'll show you. So if I put black on that side of the page I put this lovely put this lovely green that I made out of the, the yellow and black. Gosh, then if I get some cad yellow If I put it there, they look nice together because that green's made up of cadmium yellow. But if I put it there, let's cover that up for a minute. Look how much more vibrant it looks as a yellow than there. There it's harmonized in with that. There it's blasting out. So this is good to know about colour, it's always relative. If you want an area of your painting to pop, you can do it by putting things that are very different next to each other. Black is the absence of colour. So anytime you put a vibrant, bright colour next to black, it's going to really stand out. It's mostly dry now. I think the biggest thing I'm getting from this so far is that I really like this orange, which is alizarin, crim crimson and cadmium yellow, with the green. Anytime where those two meet in here, I'm really liking the effect. I'm really not liking this pink, but I don't mind it when it's dulled down this much. And I think I would like it if it was even more dulled down and even lighter. So let's find out. So here is that pink. Well, I could try a bit of yellow to take the edge off, but I also put some more black in. The, the, the yellow kind of turned it a bit more French grey. Now that's made quite a cool colour, but it's actually not anything like the pink. There's no pink left in that, so I'm going to come back in, put more pink in. Still very much lighter. I've also just added a tiny bit of the orange. Ugh. 
I'm looking for bits that I don't like or where I don't think, you know, just don't like the effect that's being created. I don't like this mushy area here. What could, what do I want in place though? Do I want some nice bright orange? Now, what's interesting is, I still don't feel like going and attacking the big paintings today, but I'm totally absorbed in this. So when I thought I didn't want to paint, that wasn't true. I just didn't want to paint the big ones. And I'm okay with respecting that feeling. And I think you have to be too. Listen to, listen to your intuition, do what you feel like, but don't let that be not painting for days and days and days. Some days it's just not a painting day and that's all right. But don't let that drag on and on and on and on because I think then that's when, as artists, we start to feel bad if we're not creating. We're meant to create things. We get miserable when we don't. But it's all right not to do it every day. And then I want a bit of oomph over there. Just a bit of pure oomph. I haven't tried what would happen if I use a darker green with more of the black in and maybe more, a bit of red in. So where I want some dark, it doesn't have to be black, it doesn't have to be plum, it could be a dark green. And then you're gonna say, well, how do you know you want some dark? Because uh, I know that I want a feeling of drama. And one of the things that gives drama is light against dark. We will always notice a light area against a dark area. I think I'm gonna take the tape off and then have a look at my little squares as individual things and see what I want to do with them, if anything, before they go in the sketchbook, which is all they're for. They're not for anything else. This is so satisfying. The marks are random, harmonised so beautifully. The tape can't help but be lovely. Now, how pleasing is that? <laughs> If only we could make big paintings that, that look striking that easily. Like, I just love the sheet of the little ones. It's so satisfying. And that certain things that have happened, now that they're isolated, I really like. And certain things I don't like. So, let's have a look at that. Love the squiggly line. And I love the way it continued on. And same here. I love the way the line continues on. There's a different quality to a line that does actually go off the edge to one that doesn't. And this is when we paint on boards or canvases, I think we have to make a gesture that goes off the edge. When we it, look how much more striking it is when the painting actually did continue, but you've contained it. There's a feeling of power being contained in the piece when it goes off. The edge. I think that's really valuable to remember. So I like that. Love the simplicity of this. Absolutely love the simplicity of that one. I like the line scratch through. I like the little orange dots that have landed there. I like the simplicity of that one. Love the simplicity of that one. Quite like that one. Quite like that one. The ones I don't like uh, any place where it feels mushed up and textured, too textured for me. So here, even though I corrected some of that, I still haven't fixed it. I love this smooth area here. I don't mind visual texture. I like visual texture, so where the brush has made a texture, but mushy paint texture, I'm not fond of. And I used to think I should be, because... I like to look at texture in other people's paintings, but this is one of the things where it's just not me. I always have to try and clean it up and simplify. And I, I, that I just love, that I just love. Like those two, there's a lesson in, in there for me about simplicity. And most of this I love. What I like about this one is this strong black shape here. Contrasted against some things that are going in different directions. I think I like that that's going up and they're going across. I often tend to have uh, landscapes that go across with a horizon, like this one. This one, the composition is really bothering me because it's a third, a third, a third almost, and this big 
pink band in the middle just isn't doing anything for me. I can fix that easily by breaking that up. But it's just good to notice. And I would probably break that up by making a random move. See, I already feel better about that because I've broken up that band. I like that colour. Could anywhere else benefit from a bit of that colour? That mushy part that I don't like, I could come in and cover up with that since I've got it on my brush. Not sure about that, but it certainly cleaned it up and made me feel better instantly. As soon as I clean things up. It's funny because I have a lot of visual texture, like I say, in my paintings, but not. I can't describe it. it it's a kind of unclear mush that bothers me. Uh, I think this one, this one's got a lot of colours in it already. This one's a little dull, so I could just put a bit of that in there to liven that up. It's a nice colour this, so all I've done is add white into the green I'd already mixed up, but it totally changes the nature of the colour. It's quite transparent, so my black line is still showing through. It doesn't work as well there because it's not enough of a contrast to that orange. There, I think it almost needs to be uh, a more grey green to be a bit different from the orange. Still not sure about that. This is a bit nothingy. This one and this one, I think the, I feel like need more light in them, and probably having leaving more white paper would have benefited them fix the problem fully. So yes, no, maybe, you know? I, I might put them into yes, no, maybe pile. So no, maybe. No, maybe with some help, maybe, no, yes, no, maybe, yes, 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 for different reasons, you can't see because there's mess on my table, but for different reasons, those are yeses. The maybes, then I would look at and say, what would it need for me to like it more? Um, and there are different things I might do. If I want to create light where I didn't leave white paper, I could put some white paper back on as collage. I could use some collage materials. I could paint over. This one, I feel just, there's a light white space, but this one just kind of, it's almost, but it's just not right. Something I need something to happen over there, so I'll need to take that back up. This one I like things about, but it's perhaps it's feeling too textured for such a small surface and too dark. Perhaps that's it with that one. That one feels too simplistic, like there's not enough going on. And actually, I was happier when it was orange there. See, this is quite a transparent orange because both the yellow and the lizard and crimson are, are semi-transparent colours. So it's not covering the green up entirely, but I can get a sense of what I think. I think it's better with that covered up, but I'll need to go over it again if I want to cover it up properly. Here, if I want lighter, then I have to think, where do I want lighter and what kind of light? Where do I, it's too messy, I feel. This one, there's not enough happening. So I'm just looking at them and you won't always know, you know, why you don't like something or why you do like something. But the ones I do like and I know I like, I'm going to put in my sketchbook and analyse why. So that's what's going to happen to them. They're done, I leave them alone. The ones I want to change some more, which are these, 
then I'm gonna tape them up again so I can paint without worrying because I like my clean edges. And I know people who like messy edges, which is also fine. So this is all personal. And there will be ones of these that I cannot save, that I cannot get right, uh, which is fine. So now I'm happier with that. Happier, I won't say it's one of my favorites, but I will definitely keep it and put it in my sketchbook. And the difference was just adding a little bit to that to, you know, make more of a picture. But I wanted to show you now what I would do with them, how I would use them. So I take the ones I really love, put them in my sketchbook, and I work out why I really love them. And uh, it's the colours, it's the colour palette and the, it's the, and it's the compositions, but it's, I love this orange, this really vibrant orange, I love this mixed green, and I love this soft French grey. I know how to get them again because I'm, on, I'm only using three colours, and well, two colours and black and white, so I know how to get any of these again, I just have to keep mixing until I get them again. So I don't even need notes on that, other than telling myself what colours I used at the top. But what I need to understand is, yeah, there's, for example, no pure alizarin crimson in these. So that's interesting. So maybe that's what I want to try on another sheet, just using these colours. Because I like the combination, so that's what they taught me. And then I'd come on the next page and I'd say, what did this one teach me? It could go that way, couldn't it? Or that way. Oh, that way. Anyway, what did this one teach me? Well, this is what happens when you put a pop of that pink in. I don't like this one, but what I do like is the orange and green together. So knowing that on this one, what I like is this purple and dark green together, but I also like the way the line goes out of the picture. And then the ones that I don't like at all, that haven't really shown me anything, I would probably next time come in, tape back up and do some more painting on, but as little separate pieces, but paint on them with abandon again and see if I can do anything with them. But I know what I don't like and knowing what I don't like is important. So I could just stick that in my book and say too much of this messy texture, don't like it. Uh, not enough light areas, not enough dark areas. I could make notes of what I don't like, but in this case, I think I'll just work on them a bit more and see if I can turn them into something. But what I like about this is I didn't feel like working. I, I knew I didn't want to tackle the big ones, but it's okay because I've been, I've done something that has moved my work forward and taught me something. Oh, I like that there. Um, but then I'll cover up the line that I liked. Do I want to put that on there? No, you know what I might do? I might just keep that tape, that bit of tape. Because I like the colour combo. Again, it's that purple against that grey. Anyway, so I've, I've done something that moved everything forward. I've enjoyed myself. I feel better for having created. And yeah, so I didn't make a painting today. That's not what this is about anyway but I did play around with my colour palette and work out some possibilities going forward and did it in a way that's a bit more fun than say uh, this, where we just paint the squares, which is fine. And some people really enjoy that. I enjoy this more. That's it for me this week. I hope your painting week is going amazingly well and that you are producing all sorts of exciting things. And if you're struggling, I hope you can see that there's nothing wrong with making something that you don't like the look of if it helped you to get a little step closer to making something that you maybe do like the look of. This painting, so I left it because it got to a point where I was loving the effects and as I say, I couldn't work on it, but now I've got some time and I'm ready to come back in because now I see the things about it that I feel need more work. I feel it needs a bit more colour interest, but I also feel that the transitions in a lot of places are not soft enough. Um, and I want to get some of that into it. 
potentially playing with some of these colours, particularly this one, which I really like, um, and possibly bringing in pops of this orange and green, which I really liked. And so maybe that's going to come into this painting. And there's a part of me that's really resistant to that because I've lost something like this once before. And there's this feeling of, oh, I don't want to lose it again. But you know what? It's not the end of the world. I can do another one. So. But also, to help me loosen up with those colours, I have this, which is an old failed painting, much smaller, as you can see. But I can have a little go with this. I could, you know, play with those colours without worrying too much. So this is a painting that I sanded back. What I'd like to keep in mind from that, those sketchbook pieces was simplicity and the colour palette. So. show you quickly this is why I like mixing colors up on the spot so I tried to remix this and I got it brighter there but then I quite like that so as you go around the painting and you find that color you're gonna find it slightly differently every time I, I like that because it makes it more interesting to me as a viewer And then turning it round just lets me see where maybe it's a bit neglected in terms of interest. Just trying to balance like the strong areas with the spacious areas. I still want space though. So I have to make something that makes it worth your while looking up there. Now it's not just a sanded off board, it's beginning to take shape as something. So if I just bring you close up, you can see that's where the oil pastel scratched in. It's different types of paint applications. It's where the texture from the previous one is showing through under the transparent colour. This is where my drips, which I've now reversed, I've tipped it upside down so the drips are going in a different direction. Um, and just, you know, some interesting textures and things to deal with when I come back to it. I'm much happier when I've done these bold things, because at least you've got something. I, I quite, you know, I see, I see promise in that one. No, yeah. interesting. So again, going back to the palette I'm interested in, exploring further, this currently doesn't have any cadmium yellow in it. This is cadmium orange, but I didn't use cadmium yellow on here. I can bring it in with the, you know, in terms of the palette I've been using, but I don't want to be too dramatic with it. And I also, as I said, want to soften some of these transitions and improve the paint application. Um, so it's just not feeling brilliant in some places.
Getting some um, more interesting areas now where where the paint application is different as you move around it, which I like. So it just gives you more to look at and it gives it more of a feeling of energy. And I love with the green and this pinky, which came in accidentally, it's like the moorland and the heather colours are coming in. This is a very moorland colour. Um, and they're coming in without me having planned it. I couldn't do that again if I tried. This experiment is here. See if I can get something more along the lines. Yeah, that's a bit closer. It's still not that colour, which, yeah, uh, it's close enough. So it's a mixture of dramatic transitions and soft transitions and I need to get the balance just right. You know, like these pieces and learning what I liked here um, has then fed into, so I wasn't ready to tackle that straight away, but it's fed into this one, uh, which I'm interested in. And then that gave me the kind of impetus to come in and do something on here but taking completely different parts of what I got in those sketchbook ones. So here it was much more about the greys, pinky greys. And on that one, it was about the greens and orange and that, and that with that pinky gray. But you know, some really nice things have happened on here. That little pink swoosh, complete accident. Uh, I think I like the green. I like this big bold mark up here. Uh, Absolutely love the accident that happened here with this brush stroke. Uh, I wound up being treating the drips I was going to get rid of differently. They ended up with this complete change. Still not happy with some paint application up here. I like these big bold marks, but some up here it's just all a bit rough and indecisive, I think. And uh, but coming along and building up really nice layers, getting pushing it past the point where it's okay, because then I can pull it back. You know, making it almost too much. So, yeah. So I hope this helps you to see that when you're not feeling super inspired, there's nothing wrong with you. We don't jump out of bed every day going, I know exactly what I want to do and I can't wait to get there. But just like any job, we show up anyway. And I do believe this is our job, even if you're not paid for it. I believe this is your job in life. You were called to do this. And I think it's your responsibility. And not to be too heavy about it, I think you owe it to us. So when you're having a day where you just don't feel like it, you've got exercises now under your belt from the taster course. You're starting to build up a collection of exercises from this course that you can always go back to and that you can adapt and play with it. and you can make up your own exercises and assignments. There's always something that you can do with your paint which will move you forward even if the way in which it moves you forward is not always clear to begin with. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I shall see you all in the group. Bye bye.